I will start with Schubert tonight. Uh, it's from, it's the first movement of his sonata in G major. And that is one of his late sonatas. He wrote some wonderful, wonderful piano sonatas towards the end of his life. And this was actually the last piece that was published during his lifetime. It's uh, composed in 1826. And Schubert died very, very young in uh, 1828. And at this time, he had already late stages of syphilis. So, and syphilis in those days were, the, the mor mortality rate was just very, very high. So with all probability, he, he knew what was waiting. And you can, you can it's, it's maybe a little bit too easy sometimes to, um, to read into the music the situation that the composer was in at the time when he wrote the music. But it is hard not to do also, and it's hard to ignore the fact that Schubert at this time knew probably that he was close to, that he was, he, he was getting this bouts of, of illness, and every time it got worse, then he got a little better, it got worse, and he knew that one of those time he got worse, it would be actually the end. So this, this sonata, the first movement, was actually published separately also as a fantasia, a fantasy. And I think that's quite appropriate. It can really stand alone, this movement. And it, it starts and continues, by the way. The whole movement is so serene. And it does feel like somebody who who came to, ter came to terms with, with his destiny. And it's also interesting, but I think it was two concerts ago now that I played uh, the fourth, Beethoven's fourth piano concerto uh, with the Princeton group. And I remember, I, I'm sure I spoke about the beginning of that concerto because it starts with this kind of magic chord in G major Sounds like this. That's how Beethoven's fourth piano concerto starts, with that lonely chord in G major with the third on top, giving it this sound. Now, that, was, that concerto was really groundbreaking. It was a very, very, it had a lot of novelty in its writing and how it was composed, not least to start a piano concerto that way. And it was an inspiration for many composers. And it's interesting in those days, um, a composer didn't really go to composing school. <laughs> he studied other composers, what they have, had done, how they did it. And so, for example, Beethoven studied Mozart. He studied a lot of Bach. Um, and so, uh, Beethoven's fourth concerto was a case study for many composers, and among them Schubert. So if you have that G major chord ringing, I'm now going to play how this sonata starts, the Schubert. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's a small little homage to Beethoven's fourth concerto in there, in, in that very start. It, it continues quite differently. I, I would say that uh, as serene and nice as Beethoven's fourth concerto starts, it, it's actually quite dramatic. This, uh, this sonata is, it's, it's slow in a way, uh, but I feel like with Schubert and not least in this movement, in this sonata movement, that he creates his own time. I, I played through a couple of times this afternoon the whole movement, and I, when I finish, I have no idea how many minutes have gone by. Not only because I was focused, or, but, but because Schubert's music does not follow minutes and seconds. It, does, it creates its own time, its own clock. And uh, in this 
So in this sonata movement, it's almost like time stops a little bit. And so it feels quite long, but at the same time, it all starts and goes the whole time within one moment. <laughs> 